Okay, so I just want to take a few moments to create a video about markets. Now, recently there's been several people that have sent emails in, uh, a couple on the forum have asked about markets, what I think about markets, and particularly what I think about their charges, um, the liquidity that's provided on markets, and the additional 1% charge that's, that's going out there for a few people. So, thought it makes sense, make a quick video, give it a brief overview, take a look at the people behind markets what they're doing, um, how everything's structured, the commission, and just generally give my overall perspective and view on where I think markets is going in the future um, and how they currently stand in comparison to other exchanges. So first of all, if we head over to this markets homepage, uh, you'll see there's some different markets available there, much like uh, any betting platform, uh, Theresa May at the moment, uh, I wonder how that'll, that'll pan out. but. Um, the overall impression straight away is that it's you know it's just another exchange. Um, obviously, the colours are a bit different. It's black. There's a lot more technical data on offer, which I think reflects the people that are behind the markets a lot of the time. You've got different percentages and and stuff like that. Also, some new charts in there. So, what is markets? Markets is a betting exchange which allows users to place bets against each other, both back and lay, betting for things to happen or not happen. Um, they don't currently have public trading tools, which is a bit of a shame because I thought they might have by now. Um, there is an API, although there's only a select um, group of users that, that use that. I don't know what the criteria is to, to get access to that. I would imagine you have to probably put a lot of bets through the market and create the market. So we'll come on to that kind of stuff in a moment. Um, first of all though, I do have uh, a little bit of sympathy for the markets because like Betfair, when they first started, um, they are kind of up against it. So, in theory, when you think about it, a betting exchange, I'm always going to be pro betting exchanges, um, is a better offering because it's a smaller margin. Um, all it's doing is allowing two people to place bets against each other and taking a small amount of commission for that transaction. With markets, it's only 2% at flat rate currently. So, in theory, they should be top of the industry because they've got the best offering for customers. However, if you've been around in the betting industry for a while, you know it kind of doesn't quite work like that. Um, and I've alluded to it in different places before, but they are against fit because it, uh, when it comes to advertising, promoting their product, um, being, being a good quality product, they are against everybody who's got a higher margin product, namely bookmakers like uh, Bet365 and other companies, which throw huge marketing budgets at, pl at places like TV channels, um, online odds checker all that kind of stuff and so uh, they can't compete with that as easily as far as, far as I'm aware anyway um, I'm sure Smarkets has turns over money and it is a profitable company but um, you know at the end of the day what does an affiliate want they want money and you know the big firms are throwing huge budgets and when you're, you've got you're running a bit in exchange on a tiny little margin you don't get treated the same from all the different affiliates unfortunately. So I think that's one reason that betting exchanges haven't soared right to the top. Uh, I know that's exactly what Betfair struggled with in the early days also, um, as have other exchanges. The commission, uh, while we're on it, is probably the biggest talking point. So you can see um, on screen here, there's lots of different options. It's all very technical, it's all very nice. And basically the way it works, if we pick, uh, say, horse racing, or in fact, horse racing's just finished for the day. Uh, apart from the evening card. In fact, yeah, let's look at Chelmsford City at 5.30. Um, just finished at Wolverhampton. Um, so, you've got the option to back and lay, and then, like Betfair, you're just charged commission on your overall position. So if you green up, you only pay commission on the green amount. You don't pay commission on the actual bets themselves, which is great, and that's great if you want to trade also. The problem for them is obviously, how do they make enough money to, to get the business growing and, and uh, developing? Well, um, you'll know from places like Betfair there's premium charges. Now with uh, Smarkets there is a 1% turnover charge. And the criteria depends largely on how many bets you're placing, how much you're turning over, how much profit you're making. Uh, I know some people have been very disgruntled about this. I can understand that from an end user's point of view because like the premium charge, no one wants to pay it. Um, it is seen as a huge tax on what you're actually doing and you try very hard to become profitable and then you get slapped with that. Um, however, on the other hand, I can kind of see the problems for markets too because 
They've been quite open and honest about this, which I have to give them credit for, uh, but they actually seed their own markets with a third party company, which um, I'm led to believe is completely separate and therefore they don't have any advantage through you know, being part of a group of companies who seed their own markets and provide liquidity on the exchange. Because for any exchange, the problem is, where's the liquidity? Nobody's gonna go there if they can't get their bets matched. So they're providing liquidity, um, mirroring other things that are happening elsewhere. They're probably doing that on a huge amount of markets for a huge amount of trades, you know, day in, day out, simultaneously. A lot of work gone into that. And then you get some people that turn up and maybe beat you on speed, such as courtsiders uh, and the like, which also I know Betfair are not so fond of. Um, basically, it's just like, you know, you've got a party and there's a group of people that turn up to the party. They don't bring anything to the party. They don't really make everybody else feel good. They don't add a lot. They just take all the stuff from the party and then bugger off. And so that's why they get slapped with this additional charge. So the way this markets have gone and done it is they've put a 1% turnover charge on people that kind of fall into that bracket. Problem with that, as we've seen with uh, premium charge on, on Betfair as well, is, you know, there's groups of people that get hit by that charge and a big chunk of their profit gets taken away and they didn't really kind of fall into that category as much as some of the greedy buggers that turn up and take everything. So commission, 2% flat on uh, all profits. Obviously you don't pay commission if you lose. Uh, there's a 1% turnover charge if you're turning over a lot of transactions and quite frankly just taking everything out of the market, adding no value in terms of liquidity. If you want to check out Smarkets yourself, there's, there'll be a link in the description below. Um, so by all means have a look around even if you don't use it. I don't personally use it. Um, I've looked at it many times before. Uh, I've had a little dabble um, and it, it, you know, it seems quite nice and it's very techy. That's the one thing that I did want to say. So the people behind this, um, they've took me to the races before. I've been to, went to QPR with them, seen the football. And by and large, they're different to the rest of the betting industry. They are interested in creating a better product, um, things being more technical, all that kind of stuff. They're like, you know, a younger, uh, drink the Kool-Aid kind of attitude uh, that compared to the other some of the archaic betting firms which is great to see but their hands are tied like I say with terms of sponsorship and advertising and competing in them sort of arenas. So if we take a look at the website in terms of user experience just looking around you can see you know it's clean you've only got a click and it's, and it's there very quickly uh, you've got your traded volumes and much like any other betting site you, know, you put your figures in tells you your total return and you place bet nice and easy. Um, slightly different layout, different colours, uh, you've got recommendations, I'm not logged in obviously there, uh, got popular markets there, Theresa A at the moment, don't know how that's going to pan out, um, other categories and so forth. So it's all very easy to navigate, can't, can't fault that at all. I've had a look at their app uh, in the past if you're on the move, not bad as well, it's very, very clean as you'd expect from a techie bunch. It's just a case of, unfortunately, um, as some of the bigger exchanges have got as an advantage, is getting the weight and momentum of growth behind that. So I think the next step for them is probably looking towards a sports book, which is not what everybody wants, um, or it doesn't want from, from people that come from maybe the de demographic of my audience, and people that are interested in taking value and trading, but I guess that's what they need as a business, to, to make some more money so they can then pile that back into development and hopefully um, produce a better product overall. I know the, the their owner, Jason Trost, is again is very focused on you know creating the best product rather than just making huge amounts of money. I'm sure this separate company that um, seeds the markets and provides liquidity um, does make money as well. Uh, that's just another way of funding their business. I think too many people get caught up in the. Uh, I mean, I'm not really defending them too much because. Um, I don't like the additional charges and maybe the fact that I don't use markets is why it doesn't bother me so much but you know they, they need to work as a business as well and it's not a case of they're trying to cheat customers I don't think or look at everybody else's trading position so they can trade against them um, but more a case of they just want to develop their business and, and try and get a foothold in the market because at the moment they're very very small. Uh, if you don't believe what I mean in terms of sort of some of the media censorship, if you take a look at something like Odds Checker, in fact, let's take a look now, you'll see that this is the kind of problem that they face. So if we go for horse racing, um, 530, where was it? Chelmsford City just started. Okay, and so all the exchanges are just evicted to the far right here where no one's really as interested. 
Um, they're pretty expressed in fractional format, which is obviously not a true reflection of what the odds actually are at this point in time. Uh, where was we? Horse racing. See, it's nice and easy to find your way around. So currently, uh, Amor Fatty is 5.2 or 5.1. Uh, Amor Fatty, and so they've got it at the fractional of the four, but that's not actually true. So that's not particularly fair at the time, I don't think. You can change the odds format on, on odds checker to decimal. It doesn't include commission. They put the exchanges on the end separate here because they know that, you know, at the end of the day, if somebody's actually looking for the best odds, they'll always just end up on an exchange and they don't really want that because that's where, you know, their commission money comes from a lot of the time, um, the bigger players. So on a plus side, I think it's fair to say, you know, you're going to get lower commission for your bets a lot of the time. Um, you haven't got trading tools. That's negative at the moment. Uh, another negative would be the fact that not all the liquidity is necessarily other players like you and I. Obviously this kind of thing probably exists on other exchanges too. I know, I think maybe Matchbook has a seeding company too, don't quote me on that. Um, and I think maybe some of the others use third parties um, that are not part of their own group. Uh, however, it's you know it could be considered a negative, it could be considered something that doesn't really matter. Um, it's hard to say exactly. But in terms of user friendliness and, and tech and all that kind of stuff, you can't really fault them. The site's not slow, all the information is there, you've got these nice fancy charts at the top, it's all built in, you can even change the time ranges on the charts. And excluding that 1% charge, uh, there's no current premium charge on winners at this point in time. So I think you know at the end of the day, if you're getting away with it for a little while, um, skimming money out of the markets before you get hit with that 1%, you're very lucky because um, you're paying literally nothing for the amount of money you're extracting from the markets. Overall, on the whole, what do I think? Well, you know, the same thing comes back every single time with exchanges. It would be nice to see some more liquidity. Um, commission's obviously great at this point in time. I don't use it myself because there's not trading tools, um, which is a bit of a shame, although I realise that's probably just more work for very little return for them. I'm led to believe there was talks with Geek's Toy at one point uh, where they were looking at getting some software developed. I don't know if that's uh, going ahead or if there's any kind of development there or not. But going into the future, hopefully we'll see a little bit more development, a bit more traction growing for Smarkets. And, you know, they could possibly become a bigger player in the exchange market. The only concern from my point of view as well is we don't want lots of different exchanges all diluting liquidity. Um, because obviously the more it's thinly spread across different exchanges, the harder it becomes to trade on one. But that's just my very own selfish uh, perspective there. So that concludes markets. That's what I think, that's what I know of the commission rates and that's what I know of uh, problems for them faced as a business. If you've got anything you'd like to add, please do stick it in the comments below. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of debate to be had about this one. If you've been hit with a 1% charge, let us know, let us know what you think. Um, if there's anything that you want to add to this sort of markets review, put it in the comments below, please do. Um, and just let us know your general experiences as a platform. Do you rate it? Would you prefer to use that as an exchange? Or are you more preoccupied with thoughts about Brexit at the moment?